What is good friends, we are back with more World Cup coverage. You have Cicada vs CBO. Cicada playing for Team of France vs um, Team Greece. And I did record this live, but I couldn't really talk or narrate because I got interrupted multiple times. So I just left the room and let my recording program record this. I got, had some stuff to do. And yeah, Cicada, I will just re-narrate over this real quick. Cicada leads over this Ladi. I assume it's going to be Scarf Ladi. I'm just going to look at his team real quick. It looks like a really offensive team to me. I assume Scarf Ladi and then Specs are live up Gengar. Um, Z move or off played Landorus. I mean, I could see off played Landorus, Z move Majorna. Mega Mowal. And then a Greninja. The Majorna could also be a Solvest. I'm not sure about that yet. And on CBU's team, I assume it's going to be Z move Kyurem Black with Sub Zero Slammer. Choice Bandit. Zygot, a mixed defensive Mew with Defog, which makes me think that he could have rocks on Doctrio. Uh, Choice Scarf or Shed Shell Tabu, really not sure. Maybe Twisted Spoon and yeah, Mega Manectric. As he leads up with Mega Manectric, we'll just re watch the first six turns because I was a bit too late at the beginning. Cicada just goes for Draco, see if you play it safe, it goes into Tabu Lele. So this is a free switch. He goes into Mawal here, right? And this is kind of irritating to me because Psychic would have blown this away because Mora has really bad spadaf. Um, but yeah, the Psyshock is actually not, I think I calc this and it's a non-boosting item damage. So this either has to be um, Choice Scarf or Twisted, not Twisted Spoon or Shed Shell is what I'm thinking. But this is a roll. After the Mora Mega Evolves, this is a roll to kill the Psyshock because Mora gets a Mega Defense Boost after Mega Evolving. So yeah, if he's Focus Sash, like this is a free player for Cicada. If he's Focus Sash, he can go into the Duck Trio, which is what he decides to do. And the player if he misses, which is gonna come into play later on, this is gonna be really annoying for Cicada. And yeah, the Duck Trio is pretty much free to click Earthquake, and the Duck Trio will keep its Focus Sash intact because he can't suck a punch of the, because of the Psychic Terrain, obviously. So yeah, Mowa gets picked off. He can go into the Landris. He can either get up his rocks or click off quick because he doesn't have a ground resist. And he does just click off quick, does not much to the Mew. The Mew is free to click Will O Wisp, so I assume Cicada is going to go into Greninja or into Gengar. Go down to the Gengar, and CBU kind of has to sack something. So this is where the player of Dodge from earlier comes into play. Because if he was, if he's focused Sash Duck Tree, you can switch that in right now. And then potentially threaten the Gengar with a pursuit. Because obviously ghost types can't get trapped. So like he's gonna go Landris here or stay in with the Gengar and yeah, he's probably gonna switch out. Hoping that the Ducky doesn't have pursuit, but we do see the Duck Tree does have a oh, stealth rock, which sucks for Cicada because his Duck Tree would have been dead and now he has rocks on his side. And if the Duck Tree would have been dead. Because he would have uh, had the Sash gun broken by the player ref, and then he would have gone sacked off to the Shadow Ball. There would have been no rocks on Cicada's side. But yeah, Landers can get up his own rocks here to force CBU to defog later on. And Sub Zero Slammer is going to blow something away. Cicada pretty much has to pick his fodder here. Because Magina is a resist, but resist doesn't mean it's a switch in. Because um, Z Freeze Shock from Kyurem is powerful. You will get blown away, especially if your offense is Magina. But even the max HP would take. I think it will take around half, I didn't run the calc. So that's kinda tough for him because he's already in the back, like he's already it's already six four, six five. I mean Gengar gets checked by the Kyurum and the and the Zygarde, but if Kyurem takes a little bit more rocks damage, it's probably like if the Kyurem comes in on rocks, it probably just to focus blast. Because we did see it's a live up Gengar. I guess from Kyurem from full, Kyurem might take a focus blast, but if Gengar takes if Kyurem takes a little bit chip, probably not anymore. That's just what I'm thinking. Like I have never run the card. Maybe from full Kyurem dies to focus blast. Like the Scarf Ladi is still useful, so I don't think he will take the Ladi. If he gets rid of the, if he gets rid of the top a little, the Ladi can be really annoying for CBU. But yeah, after Cicada picks his Fora here, he can then go out into either his Ladios or his um, Majorna. As he does decide to go into Gengar, he's obviously. 
gonna get blown away by that sub zero slammer. I said he said Z move wasted in the chat. Wait, what was finishing it? I wasted. Oh, he said Z Hyle Kieran B Valentine. <laughs> but he does go into Scav Lari and. It's okay, I can double switch here into Majorna or into Greninja. If he breaks the Mew, the Greninja on the Mew here would be a nice play. Because it's just a Scarf Lottie, it's not super strong, so um, you could take a Draco. It has some Spadef pretty easy. Other plays would be going hard later, which would be risky in a potential Shadow Ball, or you can also just sack off his Duck Tree, which is what he decides to do. And this looks like Sakata is a god, because he brings in the Magirna on the Duck Tree. The second gets a Soul Heart boost, showing why Soul Heart is a broken ability, because you get the boost even if a Mon dies to hazards, not if you. Like you don't have to kill them on with beast boost and with battle bond I think you have to kill them on but with um, so hard you also get the boost if the mon dies to hazards which is kind of wild but he can go into zygote I assume he's gonna be banded zygote and cicada um I think, he, I think he's offensive landers he did 33 to the mew with earthquake so that's probably a bolt mew and like, like offensive landers would get tweet killed by should have spent a thousand arrows and everything else would get all cool, I assume. So, not sure why he's taking so long as he's banned. It's like he can just send that out. Maybe he's calking. Yeah, oh, he might be calking here. Yeah. But it's like it comes out here and Sikhet has to pick his fort up once again. He's just in the back. It's gonna be tough for him to come back. I mean, the only way for him I can see coming him back with the only Mon would be the Majuna or the. Like the Greninja, I don't know yet. I assume it's gonna be like Ashgren, and even then, like he can't even water Shuriken freely because the Psychic Tyrant might go up later on. Or there's gonna be potential mind games. As you can see, offensive Earthquake does 50%, but Zyga takes it decently well. Considering that might be like Max Attack Landris. Or just even if it's Jolly Landris, that still was 252 attack EVs, obviously. The Landers gets to it killed by the Thousand Arrows, and now he's gonna go into his Greninja and click if he's Battlebond to get his Battlebond form here because CPU doesn't have switch to that at all. Manectric will probably get Oakwood, Kieran would get to it killed, Zayat would die, Mew would die. Oh, actually, Mew might live one, but obviously gets to it killed. I don't know how else the Lily is. I can't really scroll over the Pokemon because it's a post narration. We're recording. <laughs> if it's happy hour, we'll end over, but yeah, it's probably not happy hour. Okay, Ray Scarvey said it's pretty over unless some big ass chokes him. He receives um, Battle Bond, Tweet Kids, the Curum gets his Battle Bond off, and he can go to Manectric or into Tapu Lily if he's Scarf. He goes to Manectric, and Manectric obviously appreciates the new buff that Megas got in Gen 7 that they will get the speed boost immediately immediately on the turn the Mega Wolf. I mean it's not a buff for every Mega because some Megas like Sable obviously lose speed on that turn or like Mega Heracross but most Megas do get a speed boost. So yeah he's free to click Volt Switch here because he will pick off the Greninja and if he switches out into Lighting he gets momentum and this is a free switch into the Mew or into the top of Lily. The thing is if he goes into the top of Lily That would potentially let the um, the Majorna in, but I think the way this has been played, it's an offensive Majorna because he never brought it hard in on top of Lily. Like turn one, he went into Morwell instead of Majorna, which makes like if he's AV, why would he not go Majorna? His team is just super offensive orientated, Cicada's team. He doesn't really have switch ins for stuff. If he goes Mew on the other side, that lets in the Greninja. So I could see a CPU going into Mew. Uh, I mean, if he goes into Tapu Lily, I could see him doubling into Zygarde. But it's also a bit risky. But if he goes into Mew, he's pretty much... Like, he can either, he can either click a free Will-O-Wisp here, or he can break the Greninja and double into Manectric. But the thing is, the Manectric already took a round of rocks. It's gonna be taking another round of rocks. And Greninja got its Ash form off and its Choice back, so Water Shuriken might actually be a roll on the Manectric.
But yeah, he's obviously going into... That most means don't carry anything to touch Greninja other than Will Wisp. So I don't think he's gonna allow the Greninja to get another kill here. If he does under my neck dragon, now he looks like a lord. But this is also kind of a 50-50 because there's a Tapu Lele in the back, so... I don't know if Sekeda wants to click Water Shooting. I mean, CPU has is pretty much in control, he just has to calm down, play it safe. Like, not play too fast is what I meant. Just think his playthroughs and he ha plays through and he should have this. But Water Shooting, I think, is a role on this. I mean, you all know how strong Ash Greninja is, right? <laughs> After it gets out to form change, that boy's pretty strong. You don't want to deal with that monster. Oh yeah, Team Greece is 2-0 by the way. I did record one of their Auras games and I don't know which was the other game that I didn't record. Maybe it was from my older gen, which is probably why I missed it. Because I don't really care, like I don't really record Gen 3, Gen 4. Um, I might record some Gen 4, but he goes for Water Shooting and we see it does a lot and it lifts on 1%. He did Volt Switch there in case he wanted to bring the lot in once again. So if that killed the Manectric, let me see. I mean, one, if there were no Stealth Fox on Cicada's side, if the player if the player hit early on the Dougie, they would not have been Stealth Fox on his side. And if he got the roll here, those two things combined would have pretty much put Cicada in a godly position. But yeah, this forces the Ladios in, going to Zagat, which is a smart play on CPU's part, not giving the Majorna of potential free shift gear, or Trick Room, or whatever set it is. And one way I could see the Majorna putting in work if it comes in on the Mew, and the Mew goes for a softball or Roost, and the Majorna is Calm Mind. I don't know that that is not that calm, but if he's calm, mind, he can go for that on the Mew and boost up, because the Mew would, like I said, predict the Z-move and the Roost, so it can live that, and then the Z-move would be wasted, and Mew could Roost again. But if you have calm, mind, you can play around that pretty well. But yeah, he can pretty much, I think CPU can either go into his uh, Tapu Lele or his Mew. It's, it's, it's just tough for Cicada. He can't click Draco because of the Zy um, Tapu Lele in the back. I mean, Mew is probably going to eat up Draco. I don't know if I mentioned it yet, but it's just a Scarf Lottie, so I probably did mention it. It's not that strong. I mean, it's not a life of bloody or specs or anything like that. And Mew does have pretty good overall bulk. 100 base stat across the line, across the board, however you want to say. He does go Majorna predicting, um, I think the Mew, but he does sack off the Manectric. Yeah, sacking off Manectric was obviously a smart play on CPU's part because, I don't know why I didn't mention that earlier, because that obviously, like, if uh, if um, Majorna comes out, he gets a uh, Zygarde in, he gets a kill with Thousand Arrows, and if the Ladi stays in, he can see what he locks himself into. And if the Ladi goes for Draco, he gets a free search into, uh, Tapu Lele, if it goes for Psyshock, it gets a free session to Mew. But yeah, now this game is obviously over as a Scarf Lady can't win, goes for Psyshock. The Mew is um, gonna win this game, he's either gonna go for Willow with Softball or has reveal his last move, which is Knockoff, as it does reveal that. CPU does pick off the win for Team Greece. It's, I think Team Greece is 3 0 now, yeah. So thank you guys for watching. This was a really a bit annoying because I had to re narrate over it and it's the first time I re narrated over it for like 2 minutes and then I realized. Um, that my voice was too low, so I had to redo it, and it kind of pisses me off, so excuse me if I made like some mistakes, because I'm really getting annoyed, and it's like 2am here, but yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll bring you games, a lot more World Cup coverage alive, and also my man Cory got subbed in for Team France, he will be playing with uh, Ray Scarface, Kick-Asser, and Mazar, so that's a pretty deadly group. Stay tuned for those games too. Gonna try to catch them live and Dockridge signing out. Peace, friends.